how to create wide lats. All right, guys, here we are again. I keep noticing you ask, we deliver. Another video on how to work a specific muscle group, this time the lat width. How to create wide lats with also some lower back thickness as well. So the lat width and the lower back thickness to create that ultimate V taper. The first movement will of course be a pull down movement, which means you're pulling something down from the top to the bottom. We're gonna do it in a special way, namely a unilateral way. A difficult word for one arm at a time. Let me tell you and show you exactly why. So here we are at a lat pull down machine. The first thing you notice is this handle. It gives you freedom of motion. This is important because as I'm doing the movement, this will be my working set. So I won't be able to explain it as I'm doing it, but you probably will hear my voice somehow anyway, is that whenever I'm doing this mo motion, you want your elbow to be pretty close to the body. When the elbow is close to the body, they will allow the contraction of the lat. So when you go up, you stretch the lat, but when you go down, you want the elbow to follow a path close to the body. And if you have your hand like this, in this grip, you cannot go close to the body. However, if your hand goes like this, all of a sudden you're able to put your elbow close to the body. So. Stop talking, let's demonstrate. So we're already starting out with the weakest side first or the smallest side. And you wanna sit in a, in a way, you're actually gonna sit closer to the direction of the arm that you're using so that the stretch at the top is more. Now let's go. Stretch at the top and look at my elbow as I'm going down. It's going close to my body, contracting, stretching and repeat. Stretch, lat width, contraction, lower lats. Uh. Uh. Oh. How do you know when to stop? Once your elbow cannot get into the contraction anymore and you can't feel that squeeze, is the end of the motion, guys. Don't try to cheat yourself with momentum. The moment you cannot go down anymore with the elbow to create a squeeze, the mind muscle connection it's over so now i did 10 reps with the left side and i'm going to match the reps with the strong side so the imbalance won't be created so once again lean into the side you're working for here the better stretch and then boom yeah. oh nice in terms of rep range, I recommend not to go below 10. The heavier you go with one arm, the more you're trying to cheat yourself into getting that full rep. So 10, 12, even 15 reps works perfectly for a single arm movement like this. Next up will be the chest supported T-Bow row. And as you can see here as well, it has different handles, but whenever you wanna work on the lower lats and basically the bottom of the V taper, you always want the elbows to be able to go close to the body, at least closer than this super wide grip. So this also has a more narrow grip option. And the nice thing about this is you can truly work and isolate the lower lats without the erector muscles that attach to the spine. So you can truly isolate them here. But this time we're going for a heavier weight because we're using both arms at the same time. So what you want to look out for when I go all the way down, of course, there's a stretch. But once I go up, I'm going to slightly arch my back to be able to really get close to the maximum contraction possible because that is very important to really engage those lower lats. So what you want to do is ensure you have a grip width that still allows you to put the elbows again close to the body. Let's go. Yeah. Ugh. 
Ugh. Oh. Oi, oi, oi. Oh. And once again here, once you reach the failure point, how do you know this? When you can't go all the way up anymore, and when you can't get your mind into the muscle to get into the contraction. With the lower lats, it truly is about that contraction you can make, while also, of course, getting that full stretch at the bottom. But here it can go slightly heavier, because you have to train back pretty heavy to have it to respond. But the next set, gonna go a little lighter to focus even more on quality reps. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, man, as I'm on the prep for the Mr. Olympic competition, I'm doing two sets for this. But if you're in a building phase, doing three or even four sets for a movement like this, there's no problem at all. Stick to around, you know, 10 to 12 reps from this. Then it'll be nice and heavy, nice and safe, and you'll still be able to get into that ultimate contraction. Time for the next one. Alrighty, so this is another rowing movement, but this time instead of using two arms, we're using one arm again. Why? Let me show you. We are here at a seated row with two cables. This works just as fine with one cable as most gyms have that, of course. But I'm going to use the advantage of this is I'm going to start with the left uh, side and I'm going to grab the right cable because this already puts my body in a position where the stretch of the lats is maximum because the lats wrap around the rib cage so you want to kind of have the cable pull the lats apart away from you and this is the best way to do so but what this also allows with one arm is once i do the movement you can see i'm pulling it towards me but now i have the freedom again with my arm and look at this elbow the walking arm elbow i mean the shoulder of course shoulder needs to be dropped down with the elbow going close to the body again if I do this with the shoulder up, I'm trying to row, it's not going to be very close to my body, to my waist. But if I put my shoulder down, all of a sudden I'm right here. I can literally scrape past my waist. So that's what we're going to do to truly maximize that contraction, the squeeze, but also maximize the stretch. So uh, let's give this one a shot. <sighs> So don't overextend like this, because here you're going to engage other muscles. You truly want to only engage the lats here. So really stay upright, get the elbow low, shoulder drop down, and elbow scraping the floor. Oh. Other side. Ah. Oh. So if you don't feel the contraction in the lower lats here, you really want to drop the shoulder even more and truly make sure the elbow stays down, pointing down, thinking you're going to scrape the floor with it and that will force that contraction. And once you are in that contraction, then you know you're hitting the right muscle. So we're trying to isolate those lower lats here to truly create a V taper look to be the ultimate classic body. Lastly, we have arrived at my favorite isolation movement for the back, for the upper back, so for the lats, for the V taper on top, the width, and the lower back at the same time. So always do this at the last, because this will finish off the entire back, and I'm calling this the pullover, of course. So this is a cable pullover with, you know, this is actually a regular bar, but a slightly different handle, but it's still a bar where you hold it wider. You can also hold it with a rope. I prefer the bar because of the superior stretch. Another variation would be the dumbbell pullover. That is for the stretch as well, but it kind of is an uncomfortable movement when you're very strong. So this one will ensure constant tension on the back. So 
what you do is kind of hold it at shoulder width and you know make sure you pick a weight that you can do at least around 15 reps with 12 at the bare minimum because again it's an isolation movement so you're taking the biceps out of the movement it's going to be purely focused on the lats but also a little bit of that serratus muscle right here which a lot of people like to have attached to the lats so what you want to do step back far enough so that the stack doesn't hit the machine anymore and this is very important once you go up move your body down and once you pull this down you move your body up so you're moving with the movement so your upper body let me show you so once i contract my body goes up to contract it but once i stretch my body dives down to stretch it let me now show you as i'm actually doing it so contract body up stretch body down and really feel here the lower lats and here the upper lats to control the growth of the full V taper. Oh man. So lots of people always say you can't really work the lower lats and make them attach lower. You can't, but the attachment where it is attached, you can make thicker. And this movement is perfect for that to make the V taper appear lower which gives you a more grand V taper, which is what we all want in classic physique. All right, guys, those were some of my favorite movements to work the lat with. Very important for classic bodybuilding, classic physique to make. If you have a wider waist, make it appear smaller or whichever muscle group you want to have appear better. A wider lat, a wider back will always help you look a lot more better on stage, in clothing, as a general guy in the street, everybody wants a wider back. So these are some of my favorite movements. Of course, there's a lot more variations you can do, but this is what I personally like to do for that V taper back. Anyway, guys, thank you a whole lot for watching. Let me know down in the comments what more you want to see, because this is just one of many more videos to come. Thank you again for the goal and support. And don't forget to Stay golden. Hey, yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh, yeah, I've been wanting this shit forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the